Today is the day that you finally understand how to use conditional formatting with any formula. Conditional formatting stands out as one of Excel's most powerful features. While there are many applications of this tool, the most common is to highlight cells or rows based on a condition. This step-by-step -step tutorial will guide you through the essential components of creating a conditional formatting formula. Mastering this will transform your spreadsheets into tools that are not only more user-friendly, but more visually impressive. Hi, I'm Rebecca and I teach Excel users how to create spreadsheets they can be proud of. If you use Excel in any capacity, you're in the right place. No matter what kind of spreadsheet you have, I'm sure it could use a little updating. That's why I created the Spreadsheet Tune-Up, a free training just for you. In five short videos, I'll teach you the first steps that you need to optimize any spreadsheet. Let's start with a very simple example. We want to highlight the cells where learning model is equal to in person. Here's the learning model column, so we just want to highlight these values here. So we can select the entire table and then go to conditional formatting. And I always suggest you check out these um, default or shortcut keys for these rules first, because it just makes it so much easier if, if one of these actually applies to your situation, to your goal for conditional formatting. So we're going to choose equal to and then type in the value in person. You can change this to be a custom format. I'm just gonna leave it be yellow fill here. And you can see that any, um, any cell that, that had a value of in person, it's gonna highlight yellow. So that is how you do basic, basic conditional formatting. But what if you wanted to highlight the whole row based on this one column? For that, you're going to need a formula. To start out with, we need to select the entire range that we want the conditional formatting to apply to. So starting with the very top left cell, select all of it. You could also select the top left cell and then use the keyboard shortcut Control A. The important part is that, as you can see in the selection, there's one cell that's not shaded and that's called the active cell. That's the perspective that Excel uses to build the formula. And that's really important, as you can see in a moment. So we're going to go to conditional formatting, new rule, and then use a formula to determine which cells to format. Now, when we write this formula, we're going to use the active cell as our prototype. So we're writing the formula from the perspective of the active cell. So for this cell, which is in address B6, if, and we're putting the equal sign, if the G, if the cell G6, which is over here, learning model, is equal to in person, then we want to add a format. And so I'm going to choose a fill color. You can, there's so many formatting options, but that's the most basic. And you can see that for B6, this would work. So if, since, since the value in the cell is, is not in person, it will evaluate to false and uh, uh, the formatting would not be applied. But what, but now we want to imagine that this cell reference is being applied to all of the cells in this whole range. So if that formula, imagine in Excel, if you were to drag that down, what would it do? it would increase the row number so that instead of for the next one instead of g6 it would be evaluating g7 that's exactly what we want but what happens when you were to if you were to drag that formula across it would increase the column from g to h and then to i we don't want that so the rule of thumb is if you're applying conditional formatting to the entire row row by row, then you want the column references to be absolute, which means there's a dollar sign, and you want the row references to be relative, which means no dollar sign. Okay, now we can click OK, and you can see that it, it definitely worked. We've got the in-person rows highlighted, and the virtual and hybrid rows are not highlighted. If you were to do this process and the active cell were any other row here, um, that would not work. So I highly recommend you start, if you have an Excel table, you can just 
um, hover over it and you can see this black arrow that appears and then drag all the way over and you can see the active cells right here. Um, that's a super important tip that I don't see talked about online. So now let's make this a little more advanced. What if we wanted to make this dynamic so that instead of choosing the learning model we want to highlight, we want to allow the user to choose which learning model they want to highlight. To do that, first we're going to set up data validation here so that it becomes a drop down menu. We're going to start with data and then over here is data validation and we want to allow a list. The source, you can just type in the values separated by comma, or you can select the whole column here. If you have Microsoft 365, it will automatically delete the duplicates. Okay, so now I'm gonna select one of these, and then we're gonna do the same thing with our conditional formatting, selecting from left to right. So now we're gonna click conditional formatting, new rule, and then use a formula to determine which cells to format. The formula is going to be very similar. I've moved everything down, so now we're in row eight. So it's going to be G8. We're still going to do a dollar sign on the column, G8 equals. But now instead of typing in the words in person, we're just going to select this cell and keep the absolute references because we don't want that to shift around at all. Add a format and then click OK. And now we can see all the virtual cells are highlighted. And then when we change this, now all the hybrid cells are highlighted. And now the user gets to select which cells to highlight. For the next example, I'm going to show you how to create conditional formatting for cells that are after a specific date, highlighting rows where the time period start column are after this date cutoff. So I've selected all of the columns from left to right as before, conditional formatting, new rule, it's all the same, <laughs> use a formula. So now the formula is going to be based on cell E8. Here you can see I'm still choosing the first row as the prototype. And then we're going to type in the dollar sign before E8 because we want the column to be absolute, the row to be relative. And then we're going to type in greater than this date cutoff. And add a format and then click OK. Now we can see the dates after that date are highlighted. I'm going to change that. Um, I just typed in a new date and now new dates are being highlighted. So now what if we wanted to combine these two conditions to create a whole new conditional formatting rule? This is where I'm going to teach you how to make any formula work for conditional formatting. And that is to create the formula outside of conditional formatting and then copy it in. Remember I told you that the first cell that you highlight is the active cell. So this is the cell that we're going to use for our perspective as we build this formula. I'm just going to put it right here. Um, the key things to remember is that the formula must evaluate to either true or false and um, it must be from the perspective of the active cell and you have to build in those um, absolute and relative references as if you were going to drag it all the way across and then drag it all the way down. So what we want to do is start with the AND function. When you're combining different criteria, you could use AND logic or OR logic. So you could say where the date cutoff is greater than this date or the date is greater than that date cutoff, or the learning model is equal to virtual. But that's not what we're going to do. We're going to use and. So we're basically just going to combine these two criteria. So we're going to say um, the first one is the date cutoff. So I'm going to choose this first cell, remember, from the perspective of the first of the active cell, where that is greater than this. And just like we did before, the um, the column has to be absolute, and then the column and the row need to be absolute for this criteria cell. And that's the first condition. Then we're going to build the second condition exactly the same way, where this learning model, but remember that has to be absolute, is equal to this cell. And here's a hint, you can use the keyboard shortcut Control F to add those 
absolute references, those dollar signs. I close that. Um, so now this is equal to false. So now let's change this to something that will actually return true and see if it does. Okay, so now this returns true. So we know that this works, this formula works for this first, um, for this active cell. So now we can select this and copy it. And we're just gonna do the exact same thing. It's getting a little repetitive, but we're learning. So now go to home, go to conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula, and then paste that, fun that formula right there. Okay, all right, and then you just test it and see if it worked. Um, as long as you understand the logic behind this function and it evaluates the true or false, then this will work every time. So now let's just choose hybrid and all, all of these dates are after that date. So we would, that's what we would expect to see. So let's change this up a little bit. Oh, that's not the right year. Okay, now nothing is returned. Okay, now you can see we've got all the virtual rows where the date is after 1015. So this is working perfectly. Now, whatever kind of complicated formula you want to create, all you have to do is create it outside of the conditional formatting to test it out, make sure it works, um, and then you can just copy and paste it right in. Remember, key points is about when to use absolute references and when to use um, relative references, and that it has to evaluate to true or false. I'd love to hear any questions you have in the comments section.